Hello and welcome back to the channel everyone. Today I wanted to do the top 10 essentials for owning an aquarium. And before we get into that, comment down below what is the last fish that you got or the next fish that you're going to be getting. And without further ado, let's get into it. The first thing that I recommend having as an essential for owning an aquarium is a turkey baster. These are good because they have a smaller end than say like a gravel vac and they're super easy, they're small. They have different sizes as well and they're just really good for getting into small spaces in your aquarium that you need to clean that maybe the gravel vac can't reach or maybe you just want to be super gentle in your aquarium. This is something that doesn't have too much power. It's all manual and like I said, they come in many different sizes. You can also use like an eyedropper if you need like a teeny tiny space to be cleaned or like gravel vac because eyedroppers are kind of the same concept where you just squeeze this and it sucks up whatever is below it. These are also really good for say like an axolotl or a goldfish because they do poop a lot and if you just need some extra cleanup of like spot cleaning but you don't feel like getting a whole bucket out and everything, again, this is a super good option. The next thing is a battery operated air pump. I believe they sell them at Walmart for like $10. You can find them several different places like on Amazon. Maybe I'll put one in the tag products on this video. But they're really good to have because in case you lose power or in case you need to take a fish out, so you have a community tank and you need to take a fish out and put it into somewhere else, but you don't have an extra filter, which I do still recommend. But if you don't, or you just need some extra oxygen in the tank, it's just always a good backup option. Like I said, it takes batteries, so you do want to have the batteries that the aerator requires. And in my experience, they do last a pretty long time just on one set of batteries. It's even good for transporting fish. When I transported some fish in the past on about a 40 minute drive, it was super good just to have while traveling them to give them extra oxygen. The third essential that I recommend is the chlorinator. Now, this is just a random bottle that I picked up for some reason, but I'm pretty much a hoarder of the chlorinator because you just can never go wrong. You never know when you're gonna need more water. You never know if you're gonna be in the middle of a water change or some emergency situation. And who knows, you have one bottle and you accidentally knock it over or it's expired because these things do expire. You never know when you're gonna need a bottle of dechlorinator. So I recommend always having multiple bottles. There are definitely better brands than Tetra here, but it's just a bottle that I have. And obviously you need to dechlorinate all the water that goes into your aquariums. So you're gonna be using it a lot. Number four is an extra tank or a hospital tank. It's always really good to have an extra one because you never know when say one of your fish gets sick in its tank. Even if you only have one fish in there, it may be easier or better for the fish to treat it outside of its tank, maybe even in a smaller tank than what it's originally housed in. Or if you have multiple fish in your tank and they become aggressive towards each other, it's always a good option to have somewhere to separate them so that they don't injure each other. And also if you're new to fish keeping, you may end up getting a pregnant fish from the store. And for some reason, if you have your fish and just randomly it gives birth one day. You may need to put the adult fish in another tank or the fry in another tank, although they're probably going to be sensitive to changes. So it's probably best to move the adults or even just have one of those little fry nets that are inside of the tank. But it does happen a lot where you get a fish from a random pet store and because they usually have males and females mixed, sometimes they end up pregnant and they just have babies random. Obviously you can probably tell if the fish is pregnant, but for some reason, sometimes I've seen it happen where the adult only has one or two babies and you really can't tell that it's pregnant. So overall, it's just really good to have an extra tank or a hospital tank, like some sort of plastic bin. If you don't have an extra tank, just having an extra bin that you can move fish into if you really need to. Number five is going to be a fishnet. It is so good to have a fishnet around. You obviously kind of need one because if you're gonna have fish or other inhabitants in your tank, fishnet is going to be mostly how you are able to pick them up out of the tank. A fishnet is going to be how you mostly move them out of the tank or into the tank. This is just a really cheap one from Walmart. There are better quality ones and you do have to keep in mind, you don't wanna move your fish around too much with a fishnet because it can rip off its slime coat. You also wanna make sure your fishnet is wet before you do transfer your fish as well. You can use your hand to transfer your fish, but also make sure your hand is wet and doesn't have any like chemicals or things on it. Nets are also good if you put extra food in there by mistake to go ahead and just easily scoop it up because it has those tiny holes. So the food should be able to collect inside of the net. It me a couple times, that's why I'm giving it as an example. But yes, having a net, having multiple sizes of a net and just having multiple fish nets in general are also really good. My light just died. I'll get back to you guys when I charge it. Okay. Hopefully the light stays on enough to finish this video. Number six is going to be a good power strip. So when you think of an aquarium, you think of the filter, the heater, the light, and you may have some extra stuff as well. So that's 
several more chords. But if we do the math, usually there's only two outlets, but that's three chords. So a lot of the time, aquariums are going to be plugged into power strips, but it is super important that you have a good power strip because obviously water and electricity don't mix. It's good to have a power strip that is surge protected, one that is durable. I recommend having one that has even more outlets than you need. They also do make power strips that actually have individual like on and off buttons per plug-in outlet that you use. And I feel like those could be super helpful. Number seven is going to be a thermometer. I actually just ordered this one, so I haven't tested it out to see how well it works, but I have used several different thermometers in the past. It is better to not have those like stick on magnetic sticker thermometers. I find that those are not that accurate. I find that these tend to be more accurate than that. There's also more expensive thermometers. This one was only $3 that also have other readings on them as well. But having a good thermometer is key because although you may have a preset heater, sometimes they break and you may not know just by looking at your tank. You probably can't tell what temperature your tank is just by looking at it. You may be able to tell if you feel it, but just looking at it, if you're just going about your day-to-day -day life, you may not notice that the water temperature has changed, that maybe your heater broke and is heating up the water too much or too little. And a lot of fish depend on a good, solid, stable temperature. So a thermometer definitely always comes in handy. And it is one of the most important parameters that you need in your tank. The good thing is, is that that little green line right there that you see right here is actually an indicator of a safe zone for your aquarium. So let's just say you had someone washing your fish for a little while. It might be easier to explain to them that, hey, if it's in the green zone, that means it's good. On this thermometer, it is between 70 and 80 degrees, which is for like tropical fish. So it's a nice little feature that is in the thermometer. And like I said, it's super cheap and they're super good to have around. Number eight is going to be a good gravel vacuum. Now I slightly touched on this earlier about the turkey baster. However, a good gravel vac will definitely make your water changes a lot faster, a lot easier, and definitely more efficient when it comes to cleaning your tank. Now I've been, <laughs> been filming aquarium content now for a few years and only recently did I find out that they actually have automatic water changing gravel vacuums. I thought they only had automatic water change systems that are like hundreds, thousands of dollars, but no, they have some pretty affordable options. Most of them are handheld, but still it makes the process a lot faster. And again, I will be tagging those products so that you can easily find them. It's also good to have a gravel vacuum that is right for your aquarium. If you have a five gallon aquarium and you have some really big gravel vacuum that's meant for like a 50 gallon tank, that's probably gonna be really hard to change the water. And if the whole of the gravel vacuum is like this big, but your tank is only like this big, it's gonna be difficult. So having the right gravel vac is definitely essential. And with that gravel vac, having a good bucket, one that's sturdy, and I typically like to buy buckets that have like that little spout so it's easy to pour out as well. I had a gravel vacuum before that it barely reached from the tank down to the bucket. It made a really big mess. So it's important to have one that has a long enough tube for where you're going to need to reach, whether that be a bucket, a sink, something like that. Number nine, is going to be having the essential fish medicines on hand for your fish. So when you first get your fish and bring it home or unbox it, however you're getting your fish, you really do want to quarantine your fish to make sure you can monitor it closely for any illnesses, parasites, stress, anything like that, just to make sure that your fish is nice, healthy, and strong for its aquarium, which is also why earlier I said it's good to have an extra tank. This would be a situation that quarantining your fish or worst case, you need to hospitalize your fish having that extra tank is good. Typically hospital tanks are more shallow, easy to see into, not many decorations or really anything in the tank. And sometimes your medicine that you need to treat your fish with can't be used in an aquarium with like carbon and stuff like that. Make sure you read the instructions, but these three medicines right here, I recently picked up. These are recommended by Aquarium Co-op. I've had some of these medicines in the past, but they expired or I used all of them. So I got a fresh set. And for the fish that I typically own, those are the medicines that are best for them. Those medicines do work on a huge variety of fish, but do make sure that it is safe for your fish because scaleless fish sometimes require different medicine or shrimps, snails, things like that may require different medicine as well. Having those medicines or having the medicines that are good for your fish in your aquarium because you never know when your fish may become sick and need some treatment. And number 10 is going to be a water test kit. Now they sell different varieties of this. They have smaller ones, which are cheaper and bigger ones, which are more expensive and test for more things. If you're on a budget, then yeah, the smaller ones, typically as long as they test for like ammonia, nitrates, nitrates, nitrites, pH, those are the most important things. And at a lot of aquarium stores, you can bring your water to them and they'll test it for you. But it's always good to have it at home. You can test your water whenever you need to so your fish starts acting up. It's good to check the water because typically that is the first thing you want to check if something seems to be off with your fish or other inhabitants in the tank. The problem usually starts with the water. So having a good test kit is definitely key and also those do expire as well. You want to make sure you're checking those dates and reading the instructions because you don't want to test your aquarium water wrong and then try to do a bunch of things to it, make it better, but then find out that you just tested the water wrong. It is a pretty simple process, but you may mess it up and that's okay. And bonus tip number 11, 
is to just have double of everything that you have. So if you go to the store and you're ready to set up a tank, it is always good to have an extra filter, an extra heater, extra nets, because you never know what is going to happen. Your aquarium could break, your fish could get sick, you may need to transport your fish. So all of these things are essential and they're also essential to have multiples. I hope you guys learned something from this video. And if you liked it, don't forget to drop a like, comment down below and hit that subscribe button. Other than that, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.